How was up, y'all? It's popping in. Steve about to react to this bit. By Inside the Industry, it's titled, This is Why Dark Skin Actors Refuse to Film with Tyler Perry. I, I want to hear <laughs> what this entails. I have seen some of Tyler Perry's movies years ago. I just remember them being terrible. But they're not, like, fresh in my mind, to be honest, though. So, I did not know that he depicted dark skin men, uh worse than the lighter skin <laughs> ones um i thought he depicted all of them terribly but i i don't know i guess there's more to it for sure but let's get all the the tea let's watch mr perry comes in everything changes so we literally run the entire episode for him and he hates it does that mean i have to learn a whole new script yes that's what it means the man is trash oh. i'm just who are these people? I'm not a type. That's that a Twitter news? user that decided to publicly address Tyler Perry's films, expressing her dissatisfaction with what she perceived as racial bias in his work. Her critique did not end there, though, because she still had this to say. I'm not a Tyler Perry fan, so this is what I got to say. It's funny how he got all this money to do everything but the right thing. The woman asserted that Tyler Perry harbors a fear of white people, which she believed was influencing his creative choices and decisions. And apparently, her sentiment is widely shared, with many black actors narrating their experiences and saying they won't work with Perry Does again, like, like this one here. And they said they love the script, but they wasn't sure how the film was going to turn out, so they passed. These videos imply that there might be a hidden truth beneath the surface. So the question arises, what could be Tyler Perry's secret that has led some dark-skinned actors to decline working with him? If you're working on a regular network show, they take a whole week to film an episode. Tyler Perry Studios, they film an episode in one day. There's no denying that Tyler Perry has That's made a significant so impact, having risen to prominence in the Atlanta theater scene and achieving box office success with his Medea series. However, Perry's journey has not been without controversy. Rumors have circulated, suggesting that Perry's ego expanded to such an extent that he clashed with even someone as influential as Oprah. In the competitive world of Hollywood, it's often challenging to advance without resorting to a few questionable tactics, and Tyler Perry appears to be no exception. And when I'm hearing all this noise, man, it was crazy because there were no black people on television. Before diversity became a thing, Tyler Perry was the only one out there for a long time. Following his success at the box office, Tyler Perry ventured into television with his popular sitcom House of... But he's not covering the fact of why he was successful and why he was the only one. Because he was the one who was portraying these stereotypes about black people. So, of course, everybody else was eating that shit up. Like, yeah, you can stay because you... <laughs> this is how you portraying black people. Okay, okay, you cool. Pain. However, during negotiations for a lucrative syndication deal and a spin-off series called Meet the Browns, a controversy arose. Deadline reported that Perry fired four writers who had requested union contracts, creating a contentious situation in the industry. Writer Terry Jackson told Deadline, We were good enough to create over a hundred episodes, but now when it comes to reaping the benefits of the show being syndicated and having other spin-offs from it, he decided to let us go unless we accept a horrible offer. Mm -hmm. Tyler Perry's response to the writer's room dispute was to take matters into his own hands by stating that he now personally writes everything. However, Perry's issues with unions extended beyond the writer's room. In 2015, actor unions SAG-AFTRA and Actors' Equity took action by prohibiting their members from participating in Perry's stage play, Medea on the Run due to his production company's refusal to sign union contracts. While Perry may be focused on maximizing profits, his methods have not garnered unanimous approval from everyone in the industry. There's a camera on you, baby. Is there a camera on right back behind you. Oh, hello, praise the Lord. Um, we like to tell everybody in Dallas that we are on our way. Thank you. In the wake of the success of House of Pain and Meet the Browns, African-American journalist and cultural critic Jamila Lamu penned an open letter to Tyler Perry, which was published by NPR. In her letter, Lamu expressed her discomfort with Perry's use of stereotypes in his work. She wrote, Through her, the country has laughed at one of the most important members of the black community, Mother Deer, the beloved matriarch. I just can't quite get with seeing Mother Deer played by a six foot three man with prosthetic breasts flopping in the wind. Mm. Our mothers and grandmothers deserve much more than that. Heck, our fathers and grandfathers deserve more. 
Mr. Perry, you have told the Hollywood old guard to kiss your backside, and I appreciate that, brother, but many black folks have expressed some of the very same attitudes about your work that white critics have. Acclaimed film director Spike Lee is one of the notable figures who criticized Tyler Perry for his use of stereotypical characters in his work. Lee is well known for openly addressing this issue with Perry. I still think there a lot of stuff that's on today is coonery buffoonery. Mm. And I know it's making a lot of money. Spike Lee Howie. went on to suggest that because of these stereotypical movies, individuals like Tyler Perry were breaking records. In his view, the industry could do better by avoiding such biased and nonsensical movies that featured designated one-dimensional characters. Because if we're being real, his movies are not good. So for him to be as successful as he is, it just doesn't make any sense. If you sit down and watch a Tyler Perry movie, they're not... <laughs> They're not good. The writing isn't good. The acting isn't good. There's nothing about them that is appealing that should warrant all of his success at all. So it just makes you think, like, why is this so popular? Who's supporting this? Of course, you have some black people who eat it up. They love it. But for the most part, I feel like there are other people supporting it because it confirms their... Uh, stereotype that they have in their mind about black people. Breaking records, but we could do better. We're, we're talking about Tyler Perry at this point. Tyler he Perry's said, Let's approach put it out. to casting and character portrayal <laughs> has become noticeable names. to viewers, leading to discussions about his business strategy. Some individuals argue that Perry tends to cast dark-skinned actors in villainous roles while portraying white-skinned individuals as heroes in his movies and shows. This perception has generated discussion and debate within his audience. Pitiful black woman being abused by a no-good, dark-skinned man. And then saved and rescued by the, the perfect light skin. light skin man. During an event, Chris Rock that also pointed out the recurring theme in Tyler Perry's that movies, he had on noting Shemar that there is often cool. a limited portrayal of kind and respectful black skin boyfriends in Perry's films. He supported his statement by referencing so Tupac Shakur, suggesting that Perry's films could offer a broader I range of character representation. He said, Tupac might be a political leader if he was alive, but then again, Tupac might be in a Tyler Perry movie right now. So you don't know. He might be. Tupac might be the bad, dark-skinned boyfriend in the Tyler Perry movie. Chris Rock's point was that Tupac was a highly renowned and popular rapper during his time. However, if Tupac were given the opportunity to appear in a Tyler Perry movie, Rock believed there would be a minimal chance that Tupac would not be cast as a heroic character based on Perry's typical casting patterns. He further went on, saying, I would hope he's a senator, but he might be kicking Jill Scott down a flight of stairs. <laughs> in Tyler Perry movies, there's always... Okay. Chris Rock's perspective aligned with Spike Lee's criticism emphasizing that some prominent movies may achieve success because of Tyler Perry's perceived biased casting and storytelling choices. Both Rock and Lee raised concerns about the impact of such ideology on the film industry. We're talking about Tyler Perry at this point. No, I mean, now look. That's hilarious. I, I, I'm not saying we're talking. Let's let's not let's he not give said, a fire for be direct. I'm not saying we're talking about Tyler Perry. Looking deeper into the entertainment industry, it becomes that evident that colorism is not unfamiliar within this field. In recent times, Hollywood has faced substantial criticism, often through media-driven campaigns with hashtags that rapidly spread from Twitter to television news. It could be argued that convicted. Ender Harvey Weinstein was one of the first prominent figures to bring negative attention to the industry. In 2017, a multitude of abuse allegations emerged, exposing the darker aspects of Hollywood's culture. There's a new documentary that's all about the dark side of Hollywood and how some power players allegedly use their positions to prey on young aspiring What's actors. In the wake of the hashtag MeToo movement controversy, numerous scandals rocked Hollywood. These scandals included comedian Kevin Hart stepping down as the Oscars host in 2019 due to resurfacing of past homophobic tweets. Additionally, the hashtag Oscars So White campaign demanded increased diversity in the Oscars and greater recognition for people of color and marginalized communities. So Hollywood's reputation has been significantly tarnished, with the once illustrious Walk of Fame appearing more like an uninspiring Walk of Shame without stars. Kevin Hart mm -hmm. has stepped down from hosting this year's Oscars. He put out a statement on Twitter tonight saying, I have made the choice to step down from hosting this year's Oscars 
In a February afternoon in 1940s America, actress Hattie McDaniel achieved a historic milestone by winning the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress oh, in Gone with Road. the Wind, 1940. Notably, she became the first African American to receive this prestigious film award. While celebrating her victory and leaving an indelible mark on cinema history, the joy was tempered by the stark reality that she would be segregated from the rest of the attendees at an Oscar ceremony that effectively operated as a whites-only event. Instead of being a celebration, this event was marked more by segregation than jubilation. I sincerely hope I shall always be a credit to my race and to the motion picture industry. My heart is too full to tell you just how I feel. 80 years later, the film industry still grapples with a form of routine discrimination despite some progress in increasing diversity. The 2020 Oscars ceremony was marred by racial controversies that have become all too common for both viewers and industry participants. Major snubs, such as the omission of Lupita Nyong'o for her outstanding performance in the 2019 film Us, exemplify this issue. And the Oscar goes to Lupita Nyong'o. <laughs> And now it is in the form of movies and shows in which Tyler Perry is one of the major examples, and this is not hidden now as we have seen in his movies, that black-skinned actors are always villains in his movies. One major example is Steve Harris, who played Charles McCarter in one of Tyler's most classic movies, Diary of the Black Mad Woman. He was a successful lawyer, but far from being an ideal husband. Shockingly, Charles discloses to his wife Helen the existence of another woman in his life, and proceeds to treat her rudely, eventually kicking her out of their home. Find my bank statement and get the account on the phone. Then call Calvin and tell him to get over here and you can leave. Blair Underwood portrayed the character Carlos in one of his movies. Carlos is depicted as a controlling investment banker who exercises dominance and control over his girlfriend in the film. Blair Underwood, known for his role in L.A. Law, has been a prominent figure in Hollywood for over four decades. His career began in the 1980s, and he has seen different phases as a black actor in the industry. Underwood recently shared insights into his early career and his encounter with Oscar-winning actor Sidney Poitier. And of course this is what the kids are now calling a classic movie. Black classic movie. Isn't that cute? Ah, cute? They're so I heard cute. That like that. A classic movie. A classic. Okay. During the Don't 1980s, even. the representation of black faces on screen was rare, and the roles available were often limited and stereotypical, which didn't provide much variety for black TV viewers. Blair Underwood personally witnessed these challenges. He and Denzel Washington were seen as prime examples of black male representation on TV and in film during during that era, receiving praise and recognition for their work. There's four black women in the hood, and like, now we got the girls in the hood, and there's a little, there's a little pushback. Like, why, we get, why they only want to see us as slaves or in the hood and yeah. Hollywood. Or the challenges of limited and stereotypical roles for black actors seemed to persist into the 1990s. Blair Underwood recalled that during this period, virtually every black actor and actress in Hollywood, regardless of their name recognition or skill level, found themselves auditioning for the same roles. Yeah, I've been a history buff like most of my life. Mm -hmm. I love history. You do? I don't know a lot about history, but I love history. <laughs> we're highlighting the lack of diverse opportunities in the industry. Philip Van Leer also got the chance to play a villain in Tyler's movies. He had a prominent recurring role in the first and second seasons of the show as a drug dealer. Ion Overman also appeared as a negative character in one of Tyler's movies named Medea Goes to Jail as Linda Davis. Linda in the movie, an envious assistant district attorney who is engaged to Joshua. She secretly engages in illegal activities such as fraud, evidence tampering, and providing false legal documents involving some of the people <laughs> who she has Tyler. prosecuted. No, that's Ron not Judge Tyler. Ooh, that's not. That's the one before Judge Tyler. What's Another her name? Another actor, Brian White, was signed as a villain by Tyler Perry in his film I Can Do Bad All By Myself. He played the role of Randy, who was an abusive boyfriend and the antagonist of the show. Oh, 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 oh. I need to give him his insulin. I'll see what you need to do is take care of me. You might notice that all the negative characters in Tyler's movies and shows are very abusive towards women. This yes. thing has been very concerning, and many people raise their voices for this, too. One such example was seen in his shows, Bruh and Sisters. Bruh seems to revolve around the lives Bruh of four black sisters. men as they navigate various aspects of their lives, including relationships, friendships, and careers. The synopsis suggests that these men share a deep and enduring bond that resembles family, even if they aren't related by blood. Their close-knit friendship is characterized by warmth and camaraderie, <laughs> evident from their bright and happy smiles in the promotional material. What the hell? How you get here? I picked the last. Oh, this is horrible. I'm gonna regret this. On the other hand, Sistas appears to focus on the lives of four single black women. The tagline, single but never solo, suggests that the show may explore oh their God. experiences as they navigate the ups and downs of being single. However, the synopsis provided doesn't mention their friendships or careers, and the promotional image features separate pictures of the four women rather than them being together. The common thread among them seems to be their shared status as single women, and it's possible that the series will delve into their individual journeys in the dating world and beyond. Look at me. I'm looking. Karen, I don't love you no more. I don't want to be with you no more.
His okay. other film, A Fall from Grace, <laughs> was also criticized for colorism. The film, A Fall from Grace, tells the story of Grace Waters, oh, portrayed by this. Crystal this Fox, who decides to pursue love again after a painful experience with her ex-husband's affair. However, as she gets closer to her new husband, played by McCon Brooks, she uncovers dark secrets about him. Grace's vulnerability takes a dark turn, leading to her being accused of murder and fraud, ultimately landing her in jail. The film explores themes of love, betrayal, and the consequences of one's actions. When you wake up, you don't know that today will be the day to change your life. Grace, please tell me what happened. Tyler Perry's movies, including Acrimony, oh, often generate I hate discussions Acrimony. and debates oh, on social media God. platforms like Twitter. Some viewers criticized Perry for repeatedly portraying the trauma that black women experience at the hands of men in his films, while others argue that he is shedding light on real life issues that many black women can relate to. No, I can't relate to I can't relate to not one of these terrible movies I've been forced to watch. Because every time I've seen these movies, let's be clear, I've been with other people and they're like, oh, let's go sit. And I'm like, oh, or I've been in somebody's house and they turn it on. And I'm like, oh. I cannot relate to any of the things that I've seen. It's just like, this is terrible. Everybody getting beat. All the black women are getting beat. They getting scammed. They getting slapped around. It's just a lot. And it's like, bro, it's the same storyline. Retelling and his ability to bad have conversations around important topics. One of the internet. And I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion, but Taraji is a terrible actress. I, I, I don't think she's a good actress at all. I know she is very popular. People seem to love her, I guess. But no. Just no. Said, Tyler Perry refuses to produce a show that doesn't involve the emotional abuse, torture, and beating of the down. I was, <laughs> I was at, I was getting my, uh, when I was getting my hair done. Okay, I'm sitting in a chair, and my hairstylist she turns on this movie that Taraji is in. <sighs> I don't know what network this was on, but basically her child, her half Asian son, had gotten kidnapped, and um. And taken to Korea <laughs> by the baby daddy. Was is Tyler Perry behind this shit too? I don't fucking know. Probably, child, because it was horrible. But her acting was so bad. It was so bad and just so like unbelievable in the damn movie. And I'm just like, oh, I don't know how she's made it so far in Hollywood. Like, I could do a better job than this anyway. Woman. Another one wrote, Tyler Perry has literally Tyler went Perry from movie. sleeping in his car broke you know to having a net worth of $600 million, opening a huge studio in Atlanta so good for him. Great. black actresses and actors, Great. so put some respect on his name. His movies mm. tells the pain women go through. Mm. Critics of Tyler Perry argue that despite his contributions to the black community, he should also be held accountable for his missteps. Exactly. They highlight instances in his movies and television shows where black women are portrayed in a negative light or subjected to unpleasant and behavior. Some believe that Perry's works perpetuate respectability politics as the only path to happiness and success for his characters. Additionally, there are concerns that he assumes a level of creative control that might overlook other talented black and brown female writers and directors in the industry, as evidenced by his adaptation of the play for colored girls who oh, have considered and when this? the rainbow is enough. These criticisms oh, reflect a desire for a more nuanced and responsible too. portrayal of characters and narratives in Perry's work. Kids? Oh, that shit weird. Who is relating to that? Way for you. Just because it's been done that way for many, many years doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of other things you can add or change. So. While the Medea approach to comedy generates funny and iconic moments, many think it also carries underlying implications, like Dave Chappelle, who said, When I see that they put every black man in movies in a dress, at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them. They're like, wow, this person wearing a dress. During a recent guest appearance on Oprah Winfrey's show, That is true. We got Martin Lawrence. We got Tyler Perry. We got uh, uh, Eddie Murphy. He was in a dress. What's that? Nutty Professor? Yes, he played women. Bro. Dave Chappelle posed a question as to why there are numerous cases of black actors creating and portraying female representing characters. One notable example is Martin Lawrence, who gained recognition for his lead role in the Big Mama's Big House Mama's series. House, yeah. Likewise, Eddie Murphy incorporated a female just... character into his repertoire of roles in the Nutty Professor film series. Yep, yep, yep. It's happening. Jamie Foxx made a lasting impression yep, with his Jamie unforgettable Fox ugly too. Wanda character on In Living Color, while Marlon and Sean Wayans gave it a shot in their yep, roles in White Yes, Furthermore, there's more. The less successful Juana Man movie there's from more. a few years ago is a chapter that some may prefer to leave in the past. Among these examples, one figure emerges as the most prominent one in contemporary entertainment, Tyler Perry. Perry, recognized not only for his contributions to the entertainment industry, but also for his influence in right-wing evangelical circles, has achieved significant success and acclaim through his Medea franchise. What the hell is Black Friday? Every Friday, out this Friday, I'm Black, that's a Black Friday. What are you talking about? 
Tyler Perry has not only achieved success in the gospel play arena, but has also effectively expanded his triumph into the film industry. I never seen him talk like Madea with his broader cinematic audience. <laughs> Outside of costume. It's a one-man show. No, it's a, it's a, it's a stage play. It's, all, it's like Broadway, just with black people. Remarkably, Tyler Perry's latest book, Don't Make a Black Woman Take Off Her Earrings, even oh secured a spot on the prestigious New York that. Times bestsellers yeah. list. This raises an intriguing question. What lies beneath this phenomenon? There are many theories, both oh, bigoted and not, that are flying around currently. Because this industry is a monster. Over the course of several years, Hollywood has been widely criticized for its role in perpetuating various stereotypes, which unfortunately shape the public's perception of black individuals for a significant portion of the audience. During this period, a debate emerged, suggesting that limited opportunities within the entertainment industry often pressured black artists to accept stereotypical roles as a means of sustaining their careers and livelihoods. What person cannot get to sit here and talk to you? While the entertainment industry has not yet achieved full racial equality, contemporary performers do have a certain degree of agency over their choices. What remains intriguing in the context of these modern figures is their desire to take on these types of roles, with Kevin Hart's name being particularly notable in this regard. Convention is lifting her arms into her signature muscle man pose. Many individuals have voiced opposition to these types of roles, which many others consider to be transphobic responses. When things happen that can possibly affect your brain, your, your brain can be diminished, and, and you, don't, you don't want that to happen. So, you know, protecting my brand is, is definitely a priority. It is indeed interesting to see such a passionate response from the many different sides surrounding the topic of black men taking on female presenting roles. Mm. While we have no opinion on the matter, it is important to remember that every movie role is intended just for entertainment, so it is best to take it all with a grain of salt. I was like, no, it looks stupid. You gotta do the thing. You gotta know it's your brand. And not get too passionate about it. Over an extended period, Hollywood played a leading role in perpetual a variety of regrettable stereotypes that ultimately influence the perception of individuals for a significant portion of the population during exactly. this period. Exactly. So that's why we take it seriously. Hello. Urged, suggesting that due to the limited opportunities in the entertainment industry, black artists were often forced to take on stereotypical roles as a means of sustaining their livelihoods. Very, very interesting and very interesting to note that, yeah, a lot of very popular A-list black uh, male actors have definitely portrayed black women and they portray them in a very uh, derogatory way like it's just like they're making a mockery out of black women and you don't see like a-list white male actors pretending to be women in such large numbers like I just feel like it's just so common with black people of course you had Robin Williams, he did Miss Doubtfire, and I'm sure there are a couple others, but it's just very prominent in the black, you know, community amongst the black actors. So that's something to think about. But yeah, that one lady making that tweet, like, oh, y'all better put some respect on Tyler's name. He's helped so many black people and hire black actresses, blah, 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 blah. Sure, that's great. You can give him his flowers for that, but I do definitely agree that people can also critique how he's contributed to, you know, these negative stereotypes about black people. That's equivalent to saying, like, let's say a drug dealer, this is an extreme example, <laughs> but let's say a drug dealer's out here fucking, you know, selling crack to people, having people die and all type of shit, but he, he make all this money, but he's like donating some of it to charity. You can't be like, oh, leave him alone. He donating to charity, he helping people. <laughs> it's like, all right, but what about this other bullshit that he's doing to make the money to be able to do that? You feel me? So I feel like it is fair to critique him, the fuck? And I, I just have never liked his movies. A, they're just not good. Aside from the negative stereotypes, they're just not even good. <laughs> They're not funny. They're not interesting. They aren't uh, thought provoking. None of that. I don't get anything from his films whatsoever. And they're just a mockery and they're embarrassing. Okay. So that's how I feel about him. Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think though. Let me know what other videos you're going to watch and I'll see y'all on the next one. Bye.